Well, welcome to our, our next uh, talk, our youth talks uh, that we uh, put out on a Wednesday. Um, it's good if you're joining us, uh, it's great to see you. Just a reminder, you can see all uh, the previous series on Gideon um, on our YouTube channel, uh, Bethel Baptist Lie. I think it's what it's called, I get very confused. But look it up, subscribe and you'll pick up all the others. Um, you can also find out more on our website, Bethel Baptist lie.co.uk I will remember it one day and uh, a new uh, new for us anyway this new thing called Instagram it's probably really old so we have an Instagram account Bethel Baptist Lie just in case you're in any doubt um, have a look on there for updates and uh, other bits and pieces uh, comment It'd be great to hear from you uh, well, the other thing we're going to try this week is um, after I've done the talk uh, at half past seven on Wednesday um, we're going to try a, a Zoom youth club. Um, so if you've got um, a Zoom account, if you want to uh, get in touch, we'll give you the details for the, um, the meeting ID and the password. If you don't have a Zoom account, perhaps your parents do, then maybe you could ask them, ask their permission. And uh, if they say yes, then uh, if you send us details, we'll uh, get in touch. With, we'll send you the uh, the meeting ID etc out. It'd be great to see you and to hear from you. Um, perhaps it'll mean that we don't feel quite as alone as perhaps we did anyway. So there you go. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Zoom. I think we'll leave it at that at the moment. But anyway, get in touch. It'd be great to hear from you. So uh, if you have been with us or even if it's your first time, uh, we've been looking at Gideon over the last few weeks and we've come into the last one. The last Gideon. Let me say hooray. Boo. Boo, hooray. Well, it's a bit of both, isn't it? And the last couple of weeks, we, we looked at how um, uh, we looked at God called Gideon, and Gideon, uh, uh, God through Gideon won this amazing battle, and how um, halfway through, he finished the first bit of the battle, and he was chasing the, the leftovers and mopping up, if you like, and he came to a couple of places, and we saw how some of them, even though they were still God's people, the Israelites, there was a whole lot who were grumpy, um, that uh, they hadn't been asked to take part uh, we, and we looked a bit about that and um, what it meant to be humble um, and then the other lot were those who uh, they weren't quite sure whether Gideon would actually win the day and, and so they sat on the fence and actually ended up really bad for them because Gideon uh, went on to win stage two and, and we thought a little bit about what that meant for us how, um, how we all face death and how the Lord Jesus defeated death on the cross and he rose again and how he will one day defeat death forever when he returns. And we're in that in the middle, in the middle period at the moment. And, well, perhaps you're sitting on the fence. Then we were looking at, well, actually, you need to get off the fence. Because when he returns, it'll be too late. And then we come to tonight today. I'm going to read a few verses from the, the Bible. Uh, from Judges chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse 22 uh, to 27. It's probably a bit small for you to see it on the screen, so I'm going to give it to you again so you can either look it up on your, your phone. But you know what, better still, go and grab that dusty Bible off the shelf and uh, open up Judges chapter 8 and uh, start a reading at verse 22. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your son and your grandson also, for you have saved us from the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. And Gideon said to them, Let me make a request of you. Every one of you give me the earrings from his spoil. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a cloak, and every man threw in it the earrings of his spoil. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was 1,700 shekels of gold, besides the crescent ornaments and the pendants and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian, and besides the collars that were worn round the necks of their camels. And Gideon made an ephod of it and put it in his city in Ophrah, and all Israel hoard after it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his family. Wow, so there are some things there that we're going to be thinking about, maybe some words you didn't understand and uh, 
Uh, hopefully we'll explain those to you a bit as well, so um, make it a bit more easier to understand. But before we do, um, I'm assuming at some point in your life you would have uh, read a story. And uh, most really good stories start how? Once upon a time. All the best ones seem to start once upon a time, don't they? All the Disney ones seem to start once upon a time. And then, and then you get the, the story, I don't know, boy meets girl, fall in love, something happens, they fall apart, they come back again. And, and then there's always that phrase at the, at the end of a, of, a, of a story. If it started once upon a time, then the, the last phrase was, and they all lived... Do, 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 do. Usually in, in Disney it's happily ever after. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little story. Sounds a bit strange, isn't it? I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, you may or may not know I like riding a push bike. And I like going out and riding. And at one particular time, um, I met up with, a, with my friend who was doing a really long ride. And uh, if you're local to North Wales, you'll know the area. Um, we met at the top of the Horseshoe Pass by Llangollen. Um, I cheated, he rode up it, and I met him at the top at the, at the cafe, having been dropped off. Um, and I started there, so um, I was all fresh, we good to go. He just climbed a massive hill. Uh, he was a bit worse for wear, but he did alright. And as we were going down, it's all downhill there towards home, um, we came to a roundabout and suddenly he slams the brakes on and he shouted and he stopped and he pointed. And he pointed to a sheep. And this sheep was lying on its back, struggling. It couldn't get up. I don't know whether it was just the, the weight of its, uh, its hair, or it was wet, or whether it was, it was pregnant, I don't know. But it was stuck. And, and if you know anything about sheep, that's a really dangerous thing to do. He'd just ridden for 40, 50 miles and he was tired. So um, I was volunteered to climb over the fence and to go and rescue this sheep. So I left my bike with him, I climbed over the fence and, um, and I was getting closer, the sheep was struggling a bit more and just as I got to the sheep, um, I'd like to think it was my influence but um, it decided to roll over onto its feet. I don't think I was that scary, might have been, uh, and ran away and you know what, oh I felt so good. I, I was a rescuer, I'd saved the sheep, how cool is that, you know, Matt, the sheep rescuer. Oh, what a fantastic thing to do. But do you know what? What if? What if I had come the next day on the ride of my bike, come to the same park, stopped at the roundabout, looked across, and seen the same sheep there, rolled on its back? Oh, I'd have to get off the bike, go across, roll it over, and let it go on. Ah, oh, Matt, the sheep rescuer. But what was if that happened time and time and time again? Actually, then the sheep, A, it's a sheep so they're not particularly intelligent, but that sheep doesn't really need a rescuer. That sheep needs a, a shepherd uh, who will guide it and lead it and, and to basically stop it rolling over in the first place. You know, shepherd will come and, and move them away from, from danger. And that's the whole point of this last bit of the story of Gideon we read in Judges chapter 8. You see, God's people, yes, they did need a, a saviour as such, and, and Gideon was that. But actually, they needed more than that. They needed a, a ruler who would lead and guide them. Um, they needed a shepherd, someone who would look after them and, and keep them from danger. After all, you know, uh, over the last few weeks of Gideon and before, we were looking at the early uh, chapters in Judges, we all know what happens when, when the people of Israel are left to their own devices. How they go into their circle of, of disobedience and, and then they fall away. And how they get into trouble and God has to raise up a saviour. And somebody will rescue them, a judge. And how they, they're alright for a bit and then the judge dies in this circle. So when they haven't got anyone, they just wander off like sheep. So... They've had a saviour, but now they want somebody to rule over them. That's what we read in those verses. And I suppose the, the big question is, where are they going to find somebody like that? Where are they going to find somebody who they can trust, who will rule them, who will lead them like that? Oh, do you know what? 
Oh, the answer's uh, really straightforward in their eyes, isn't it? Gideon! That's what they think. Gideon is their man. Gideon, you know, the, the former loser boy, now this mighty warrior, this mighty hero. Oh, he, he's the one who's going to rule them. There's no one else that fits the bill. There's no one else they trust. Look after all what he did. But you know what? I think this is probably the, the, the biggest tragedy of the, the whole account of Gideon's story. Gideon messes up. Not just a little bit. He messes up completely. There's no happily ever after ending here for Gideon. So, what do they request? Well, we read it, but here in, in verse 22, we read that the, the people came and they said to him, Gideon, we want you to be our ruler. We want you to be our king. And after you, Gideon, we want your son to be our king. And we want your grandson to be our king. Let's be clear. There are two, at least two, if I can say, wrong things with their request. And probably the, the worst thing is this. It wasn't Gideon who saved them from the Midianites. It was God. Oh, Gideon was there, but it was God who won the battle. It was God who saved them, and God used Gideon. It wasn't Gideon that saved them at all. And secondly, their, their desire for a, for a king, for a human king, well, actually, that was wrong as well. Because God is their king. God was their king. God was their ruler. And yet they didn't want God. They wanted Gideon. So how, how's Gideon going to respond to this? What's, what's his response? And we read it there, don't we, in, in, the, in verse 23. Gideon says, I will not rule over you. And my son will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Oh, do you know what? Doesn't that sound great? Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't it? Doesn't, doesn't Gideon sound oh, so humble? Doesn't he sound godly? Sound, it's the right thing, isn't it? Yeah, he, he's right. God is their true king. Oh, do you know what? You can just imagine uh, Gideon. I say, getting, probably giving himself a, a gold star. Look at me, look how humble I am. And do you know what? We can now live happily ever after. But Gideon doesn't leave it there. It's crazy. He goes on and he, he adds to his request. He says this, do you know what? Just do this for me. It's there in verse 24. Let me make a request for you, he says. I'll tell you what, why don't you bring me all your gold earrings that you've just won from the spoils of war and, and donate them to me. Why don't, why don't you do that? And he asks for gold. And do you know what the Bible says? Um, he, he was given or he collected 1,700 shekels. Now you may not know what a shekel is. Um, I wasn't sure, I've got a rough idea how much a shekel weighs, but I googled it. Google's great for some things, be careful what you google. Uh, and it equates to about 20 kilos of gold. Well, that might not sound like a lot, but do you know what? I did some more research, depending on how much the gold price is. That was over a million pounds worth of gold that they gave him. A million pound. And that's in today's money. That would have been so worth so much more in their day. But wait a minute. That sounds a bit like a kingly thing, doesn't it? To be rich and to get all the gold. That well, sounds like he actually wants to be king to me. But not only that, he makes this, um, did you pick it up? He makes uh, an ephod. Yeah, you might think, well, what's that? Well, it's, a, it's an item with clothing. It's like a, I don't know, a, a coat, a vest. And, you know, it would have been pretty spectacular. And then he makes his town the capital city. Sounds like a king to me. And then, and then I suppose to, to cap it all, he calls his son Abimelech. Now, don't really know what Abimelech means, do you? Well, do you know what? <laughs> it means my dad is king. Words that affect. So even though he's saying, I'm not going to be your king, God is your king. He's actually, he's actually is being king. 
He calls his son my son, my daddy's king. But you see, I don't think Gideon wanted the responsibility of kingship. It's hard. You're not trying to rule and, and look after people and be wise. And I don't think he wants to be king from that perspective. Oh, but I think he wants the, I don't know, all the trappings that go with being a king. He wants all the, the privilege to being with the king, of being the king. He wants the, the gold. He wants the, the, um, the recognition. He wants the capital city. He wants all the things about being a king. And you know what? It's a really tragic end to this account of Gideon. Gideon isn't a, I don't know, a, a humble worshipper. He's being a weak loser again. Remember just how we found him hiding in the, the press all those verses ago. But you know what? And this often happens. Whether Gideon liked it or not, the people did follow him. And he led them into a disaster. Look at this, verse 27. So he makes this ephod, takes it to his city where he lives. And the Bible says that all Israel, it's quite a hard word, isn't it? Hoard after it there. Um, they worshipped it. They came there and they worshipped it. They turned their back on God and worshipped this thing that Gideon had made. The Bible says it became a snare. It trapped Gideon and his family. It led them to disaster. After everything that he's been through, Gideon abandons God. And not only does he abandon God, he leads God's people into idolatry. And then he dies. And you know what? The people are no better off than they were at the start. Yeah. Didn't get them anywhere. Quite like that. We all need someone to save us. Well, you might think, well, I don't, I'm pretty sorted, but actually it's a lie. We all need someone to save us, save us maybe from ourselves, maybe save us, definitely save us from our sin, from our, our failure. And the good news is that, that God knows exactly what we're like and he knows what we need. He knew what the, the people needed in Gideon's day, just as much as he knows what we need today. For them in, in Gideon's day, uh, well, we'll probably look at it over, over it eventually, but God has this plan. It's an amazing plan. And it's, it involves this, this woman called, called Ruth. Um, it's a bit of a love story with her and Boaz, how they get together. That is a bit of a once upon a time, and, and it is a happily ever after, just in case you're not sure about those that those things it makes it sound like a fairy tale it's not it's true it's in the bible as a true story and they have a son and then he has a son and and you know what from this line there is a king that's born and it's king david you know you've heard about him shepherd boy fought goliath with the sling and the stones and he becomes a great king but you know what david messes up too David wasn't the, the complete deal, if you like. Oh no, another one is needed. Another ruler, another shepherd, another saviour. Another, another member of David's family, if you like. Another heir. Another king who will save and who will rule forever. Wow, who's that going to be? Who's that? Well, it's a passage we tend to read at Christmas. I suppose that's the clue, isn't it? In Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. O oh, you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. It's talking about Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus actually is a, a, a descendant in the human line of David. 
And he is this one that's been prophesied and talked about and longed for and waited for. He's the one who, who saves. He's the one who rules. He's the one who shepherds his people. The answer is Jesus. I suppose the answer is only ever Jesus. So who rules you? This ties in a bit, a bit about you know who sits on the fence. Who rules you or what rules you? There's always something. Perhaps it is, you know, drink. I know lots of people who are ruled by that or drugs. Oh, I don't know, perhaps it's, it's money and your desire just to get as much as you can, a bit like Gideon asking for the, the gold earrings. But money is your driving force. You'll do anything to get money. You'll, oh yeah, you may work ever so hard. And, but is that what you're living for? Is that what's ruling you? Perhaps it's opinions. Perhaps you're, you're so concerned with what people think about you that that rules you. You can't seem to be wearing that thing or, or going to that place or, or saying that or being with those people because you're concerned what other people are going to think. And it's so constricting, but it rules you. There are lots of things, aren't there? We live in the, the age of celebrity. Everything's about fame. Get my fame. No talent, but get fame, get power. And all these things are having such a, a negative effect on us as a, as a people, as a society. Not doing you any good. Quite the opposite. Who rules you? Well, the Bible says that actually the Lord Jesus is the perfect ruler. He's the saviour. He's the shepherd. He's the ruler. He's the king. I suppose, I suppose this, is, this is the bottom line. Jesus is the, the only ruler who actually loves you. Really loves you. Jesus is the, the only ruler who, who actually desires your good. Your good. That's what his desire is that you are the best that you can be and the best you can do because he loves you and he saves you. And you know what? This sounds a bit weird, and it probably is a really weird thing to say. But the Bible, the Bible describes that being ruled by Jesus is actual freedom. All those other things were slaves to them. But if you want to know real freedom, then allow Jesus to be your saviour, your shepherd, your ruler, your king. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for your Bible, your word. And Lord, as we've read Gideon, we've seen some real lows, some real highs. And now, Lord, we just read another low, how, how he uh, turned his back on you in many respects and how he went off to false gods and how he drew others away from you. And he wasn't the king. He wasn't a good ruler uh, and he was only a saviour because you used him but we thank you for the Lord Jesus we thank you that he is the true saviour he is the only one who can save us from our sins can forgive us can give us a relationship with you and thank you that he rules in such a loving way such a, a caring way and so father we just pray that we will uh, throw away these false gods and, and live and serve you and enjoy real freedom and peace as your children. Amen. Great to have you with us. Um, don't forget all those things we said at the beginning about social media, your, your Instagram, your Facebook, your YouTube website. Get involved with Zoom um, tonight. Drop us drop us a note and uh, we'll send you the meeting ID. It'll be good to see you. Take care. Stay safe.